your best requires commitment. We share that dedication to excellence. Introducing new Titleist 917 medals, the standard for complete performance. Well, Aaron, this is like old times, yep. except I never used to need glasses when you first came in. <laughs> Your mum and dad are here. It's just fantastic, fantastic that you're back in Australia and a great win. You were so excited after the win. Can you tell us about that week? Yeah, that week was a, was pretty, it was a pretty cool week. Um, you know, my game had been building up until that week. I really felt like uh, really starting at um, the Quicken Loans tournament that I really... Um, what was it? Sort of like clicked into something. There was something that really clicked in that week that I, I, I figured out, and I'd played well most of the year. And that week is something sort of that week it made, made it go to it, sort of the next level. And um, going down there, I felt very confident, very comfortable with my game, and um, got off to a nice start that week. But Johnny Vegas got off to an um, amazing start that week. So uh, going in on Saturday, I was just just trying to just just have a good round and. Um, fortunately enough, he didn't go too far, mu too, too much for, for, too much forward. And uh, going into the last day, I started what three back, and I was very confident going that day because I was driving the ball the best I had, probably ever, and uh, I was putting the ball nicely. And and uh, and then just to hit those shots on the last couple of holes, um, coming down the stretch, especially that seven iron on 17, with the water to the front, short and right, and the pin was cut up against the water and hit a perfect little fade seven iron to four feet to make the birdie to tie up Siwoo was, uh, was a huge confidence builder. Mm -hmm. um, and then just in the playoff, I really felt like I was, uh, I kept thinking I was going to wear him down because I was just driving the ball perfect every time and uh, hitting it inside him on every hole. Um, I knew at some point I was going to make a putt to win. And you brought that A game with you here this week? Game feels really good. Um, been been uh, working hard. Game feels game feels great. Um, had a great week of practice and preparation last week at home in Arizona, and uh, just super excited with where the game is at, the direction it's heading, and and then this week, I mean, Royal Sydney. I mean, as you mentioned, there's a lot of great memories here, and mm. um, yeah, I mean, just walking around yesterday was just it was just awesome, especially walking up 18. You know, it's amazing how like it's, what 17 years ago it doesn't really feel that long. Can I have questions, please? And can you use the microphone? Thank you. Aaron, how do you rate the uh, chances of the superstar amateurs we've got in the field this week? And what do they need to do to convert the great seasons they've had into beating the professionals here at Royal Sydney? I mean, obviously, the way that, that they've played. Yesterday, I played with uh, Harrison Endicott, and he's a great player. Um, he's got all the game, just, just needs to just play golf, you know. At the end of the day, I mean, if you shoot a 68 anywhere, you know, you can shoot a 68 here, you know. So this is really just playing the golf that they know they can play. Um, I mean, that's really all it comes down to. I felt like I did that when I was an amateur here. I didn't feel like I did anything special. I just played the golf I felt like I could play. And with the guys, with how good some of the years that they've had, like, if they just do that, then it's good enough. Can they win? Yeah, if they shoot the lowest score. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, like I said, I'm sure because you, no one would have bet on me 17 years ago. So, like, like I said, um, I haven't seen a whole lot of their games, but like I played with Harrison yesterday, and he's he's a very, very good player. So, um, if he just plays the way he did yesterday, there's no reason why he won't be around that around there come Sunday. Thanks, Matt. Bruce, Aaron, um, looking back at, the, at those 17 years. If you were to advise a young man that's uh, like a Brett Coletta or a Curtis Luck or a Harrison Endicott or Cameron Davis, uh, based on your experiences having so much success early, what would be your advice to those sort of players? I guess what, what I've learned over the years is um, understand what you do and when you do it well. Um, because when you're a youngster growing up, you're building your game, always making changes with your swing, always trying to improve and get better um, because you're building your game. And then when you get to a level, like when you get to the level, say, where they're at or at, like if you get to like Jason Day, Spieth, Adam, these guys, they're not really working on their game in the sense of making changes all the time. They're just maintaining it and doing, getting good at what they do. So if I understood that, when I was younger, 
I think it would have been a lot different, you know. So it's definitely understanding what you do. I think that's why I've been a great putter pretty much my whole career because I understood what I did well. So I just do that every day. And there's some days where the hole moves on you and there's some days where the putts go in. So, but more often than not, I'm going to putt well. So I would tell them, understand what you do when you do it well and just keep doing that. Darren. Aaron, obviously you beat Greg Norman um, down the stretch. These guys potentially could be trying to beat yourself, Jordan Spieth, Adam Scott. How easy was it for you to block out Norman and how easy can they try to do that? Um, I guess the biggest, the biggest thing is just to be able to focus on your own, own game and um, controlling what you can control. Like, honestly, I remember that last day, I didn't really think at all about Greg at all because I was so focused on my game and what I was trying to do. Um, I remember I had a, a little like motto that I said to myself that week. It was like one shot, one hole, one round, just to keep me in the present, keep me focused on what I was doing. Um, I remember that any time I thought about what someone else was doing was walking off 17 to 18, I asked Lindsay Stephen, who was commentating, I said, oh, because Nick O'Hearn was two shots behind me and he was playing 18. I was like, oh, what did Nick do on the last? And he said, oh, just keep going, you're fine. <laughs> so, um, but that was the only time I thought of it. So that's the biggest key is not focusing on what other people are doing. If you can just focus, if they can focus on what their game is and just doing that, then it should be okay. Right. Aaron, when you left here in 99, the following year, 2000, you came back, you won the Australian Open again. You had the world at your feet, obviously. Do you feel like you lost some time between then and now? We thought then you were going to be the next Tiger Woods. I'm sure you did too. That's sort of how it felt. And a bit what Bruce was asking about advice you'd give to, to some of these up-and-coming players. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think that after, say, 2000, if you said that uh, I'd only won four times on the PGA Tour, I would have been surprised, you know. Um, I definitely feel like I've learned a lot over those years, you know. Um, I feel like that if I didn't have, uh, you know, that experience that I've got, I think it's going to hold me in good stead for the next, for really for the rest of my career. You know, I feel like, like I said, if I'd understood a few things back then that I understood now, or if the, some people who were helping me at that time understood those things too, that could have been a different story. But my story is what it is. I wouldn't change it. Um, so... Um, I'm just excited for where I'm at right now, the game that i got right now, and the direction I'm going. So just one more for me. And How much of a motivator was it to lose your card for the first time at the end of last year, and then we've seen some of your best golf since 2000 in the last 12 months? Um, I wouldn't say it was a motivator, to be honest, because I was, surprisingly enough, I was like super relaxed and calm about it. Um, a few people were around me were stressing. Um, and I was like, it's okay, just relax. Like, everything's going to be okay. Because um, I was just confident in my game. Um, I, I've said it before, and like, my relationship with, with Jesus is just a, that's a rock in my life and always will be. And I would think if I didn't have that in my life, I don't know if I would be where I am right now. Um, my family back home, you know, like the support system that I've got is just uh, is amazing. Can you talk about how your goals have changed from, you know, when you won a couple of Aussie Opens, you obviously came out, I think you talked about being number one in the world. So what are the goals now? Same. Absolutely. Be I, number I, one in the world? Absolutely. I feel like the experiences that i got now, uh, like, um, they're really going to hold me in good stead with the direction I'm going, where my game is. Um, I feel like I'm driving the ball better than I ever have even as a youngster um, definitely understand my game better understand um, what I need to do to prepare to prepare for tournaments still learning about that but I feel like I got a much better handle on that um, so I don't see any reason why my goals should change for, just because it's I'm a little bit older you sort of answered then I was going to say some people would li hear that and say well that's crazy you know given w what do you say to that people who, who hear would react that way that's fine that's the everyone has an opinion and um you know that's fine by me because i know with i know where my game is at um i know the guys that i've got wor working with me that i'm that they believe i can do that that's probably the biggest thing um you know so people can think think hey that's a bit crazy but I, honestly i feel like it's very attainable 
and uh, I'm excited for this coming year and where, and where and the years to come. To be honest, Brenton, Aaron had some pretty low times on the golf course over Absolutely. the last couple of years. How desperate did you get to turn it around? Like, what were you were you willing to try anything and everything to try and turn it around? Uh, yeah, I mean. Last year was, was like, I remember walking to the tee at the John Deere and literally I had, had no idea where the, where the ball was going to go. Um, that was probably the the point where I got to. And at that point, I'd asked a couple of guys for some opinions on my swing and what they thought. And Scott Hamilton, um, he pointed out two 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 things. One real main thing that was the the crux of the problem. And so as I missed the cut at the John Deere. And then that weekend, I spent all weekend on the range with him. Um, and then that next week, I went to Alabama and had my first top 10 of the year, hit the ball, I best I'd hit it all year. So I really saw results straight away from what he had told me. And so then from that point on, I just kept working on the same stuff for the rest of the year. And actually hit the ball really quite well the rest of the year. So um, I was actually, that's why I was very relaxed and confident, confident going into this new year, because my game had felt really good. I was hitting the ball consistently. Um, because my strength is obviously my short game and putting, so um, once I could, once I could get the ball hitting under control a little bit, and more consistent, then I knew that I could start shooting good scores consistently. Is it true that during the tough times that you actually resorted to watching YouTube videos? Oh, absolutely. For tips. Yeah, because I mean, you're trying to figure out like, hey, look, here's my swing, and then here's guys who hit the ball really well. What's the differences? And I'm trying to figure out, like, what's the difference? Okay, Rory does this, Adam does this, Jason does this. You know, so you're looking at Sergio does this. So you're trying to look at these, all these guys, what's some similarities and what's different with me? And you're trying to figure it out. And, I mean, that's just, I mean, it's just, like, uh, torture because you're trying to figure it out where now I've got a couple of keys that I just work on all the time. And I, I'm just, like, beyond relaxed with my game and... With where it, where it's at, I just wake up, do the same thing every day, and and it's great. Is that just going back to what you were just saying? That simplicity with those just a few simple keys is that more the Aaron Badley of '99 than at any stage over the past say 15 years? No, because '99 was like the end of the of what Lynchy and I worked on was the end product of what we'd built since uh, I was like 13. It was like each year we worked on, worked on, worked on the swing, made changes, made changes, made changes. Then we got to 99 and we put the last piece in at, uh, in August at the US Amateur. And so up until that time, it was just building where now it's at, at a maintaining stage where it is simpler now because I'm not building anything. It's just a maintaining and just getting better at that. Um, so it's a little different in that sense. Like, after 99, if I'd understood that maintain, how to maintain, then things probably would have been a little bit different. But then I wouldn't have the life I have right now. You know, I wouldn't have my relationship with the Lord. I wouldn't have probably my wife and kids. And so all things are great. So um, it's exciting, to be honest.